with the whole <laughs> thing. <laughs> no, it was, it was, it, it was, uh, it was fun to make, and uh, it was a beautiful script. But also, Sean is very good at um, rolling with things, mm -hmm. and particularly with the children. Um, he had to sometimes, you know, create situations so they didn't have to actually play a scene, and they could put things in their own words, and he'd find parallel things or, or that would accomplish what he needed to have accomplished in the scene. Mm -hmm. So every day was uh, interesting. <laughs> every day was a challenge, and it's true. I love those kids. Mm -hmm. They were sometimes a real pain, <laughs> and uh, you know that just made my job easier because <laughs> there was so much reality in where we were shooting, with whom we were shooting, and what we were doing. It it um, it was interesting. You know, Sean, in order to let them feel free and not feel self-conscious about acting, really encouraged them to, um, you know, have fun. And, and also be a little devilish. Uh, and so they get, you know, they get cranked up the way kids do. Plus, you've got all the attention of the film crew on mm -hmm. them. They've got sort of a built-in audience. Their parents are there, but their parents are kind of letting them do their thing. So they get, they get wrapped up, like kids do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can imagine if you're playing a scene and they're not really wanting to play the scene, they're having an interest in playing, then you got to bring them back that way. They are, but I think, you know, in that environment, that's nothing. Mm -hmm. and, and in fact, in fact, you know, in that world, it's very clear, I think, in the movie, it, it expresses that basically the, the Mooney character will end up being Haley mm -hmm. if she doesn't have different opportunities. Mm -hmm. and Haley has taught Mooney some things, and Mooney teaches Haley some things. And one of the things that Haley, the mother, teaches Mooney is, you know, kind of a grift, uh, kind of not taking it from anybody, uh, being independent, having fun, all those things. Um, so I think that's where the language comes from. What did and it was also during the Depression, and the adults around them, although they weren't really featured, you know, they weren't going through easy times. Mm -hmm. But the kids had a similar thing. They were kind of grifters, they were kind of mm -hmm. scheming, they were causing trouble, mm -hmm. and mischief, mischievous. Mm -hmm. um, Sean never mentioned that, the whole shoot, <laughs> shoot. And then when I heard him say it, reference it, when we started yeah, doing press, it, it, it made all the sense in the world. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it just shows, sometimes you don't have to know those things. That's yeah, you know. Um, I, I had something of a backstory. Uh, certainly in research, I, I, I talked to some people that had this job and had this kind of life. Um, so that was helpful, not just not just to get the psychology and kind of where they come from, but get the yeah get the world and also little details, what kind of watch mm -hmm. they're wearing, uh, you know, whether they have any jewelry, how they cut their hair, how they present themselves, how they carry themselves. And, one of the biggest things that I took away from that was that he was very proud of his job. Mm -hmm. And he was very proud that he, you know, made the motel a better place than it was. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of touching because, and I think, I didn't recognize it when I was doing the movie, but in retrospect, when I see the movie, I think that's kind of the beautiful things for me about Bobby is that he's not an extraordinary person. I mean, in, in the sense of the talent or, or ambitious, he's a, he's a quite simple, normal guy. Mm -hmm. But he has kind of this big heart, and it's like the the average guy that try, tries to make the world a better place. And his world is the world of this little community. Mm -hmm. So it has real resonance because it. I think we all have that in our lives, you know. Uh, we know our limitations, but we also try to apply ourselves because we feel best when we try to make things better. You know, um, I, you know, I, I've been an actor pretty much since I was 19. Uh, I had a couple other jobs. I did figure modeling uh, for art classes. I worked in a, a factory when I was in school. 
But I'm not a Muslim actor. Mm -hmm. Very modestly in an avant-garde theater for many years. So it wasn't. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that I, you know, don't know a little poverty. <laughs> 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 you know, there were days where I ran out of money by the end of the week. Um, but uh, basically, I don't know any other work besides that. Yep. Oh, well, you know, I did. To be honest, and uh, I didn't need to. Yeah. It was my job was more to fit in with them. Yeah, you know, yeah. because they were very well cast, and and Sean is very shrewd in knowing how to make them feel comfortable. So, you know, sometimes uh, a non-acting approach to acting is more effective, and and so I tried to be of that world. You know, mm -hmm. and that's true anyway. Sometimes on movies. Some movies require performances that are very in your face and very bold and, and kind of show off. Other ones, depends what your job is, what your function is mm -hmm. in the construct of the movie. Other ones, you really want to disappear. You almost hope that the audience doesn't know you're an actor. I mean, I've been doing this long enough that probably maybe someone seen me in another <laughs> movie, you know, so <laughs> I, I don't fool myself completely. But the idea is nice. So the idea of being in that community and not having there be a difference, you know, mm -hmm. I liked, I liked yeah. actually, and, and anyway, it's true almost always, because even in an industry movie, even in a studio movie, sometimes you have a wide range of skill, Yeah, sure. because actors come from, in, in our culture, in, in the States anyway, actors come from a wide range of places. Some are highly trained, some have lots of experience, some just have that thing, uh, mm -hmm. you know, have a, 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 a beautiful or, or, you know, just are attractive or charming. They may not be active. Those are all things that we're playing with, you know, when mm -hmm. you make a movie, because you can cut around things, you can craft things. Some actors are, you always have to find be in the world with these other people. So it wasn't as extreme as you might think. Um, not specifically. I mean, just uh, the arts in general. I mean, uh, you know, I was a patron of the Wooster Group for many, many years. <laughs> and I continued to try to help um, filmmakers and uh, friends and other people, but nothing, nothing formal. Um, you know, the question is, do I give back? But my my thought is that hopefully I make movies that, you know, will, you know, challenge the way things are for the better and help us imagine a better way to be with each other. Whether that's true or not, but that's the idea. And because that's, that's my, those are my tools. That's what I try to do. Um, so, so it's, it's, it's sticky, but you know, as it is, I barely have time to do all the things I want to do. So mm -hmm. the idea of, you know, uh, no, any formal, any for I don't have formal affiliation I, with anything. I that. totally agree with you. I believe that we are meant to give back based on the skills that we have. Right, right. So you try. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I finished two days ago. I just came from uh, Australia. Five months of shooting. Oh. Wow. wow. And they're still going. Wow. Because it's very, um, it's a very effects heavy movie as you can <laughs> imagine because it's under, so much is underwater. Mm -hmm. And particularly the Atlantean creatures, which I am one of, mm -hmm. we don't walk around. We mm -hmm. swim. And, <laughs> and, and when we're standing, we're not standing on terra firma. We're floating. Mm -hmm. Wow. So you can imagine what that requires. Uh, what it requires is a lot of wire work and mm -hmm. different devices. So we're floating and when it's time to go, you can turn <laughs> and swim away mm -hmm. because all of those things will be sweetened and, and yeah. it's some, some things will be erased like mm -hmm. the wires, but basically you have to get the basic movement. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's, that's a huge part of the scene. Mm -hmm. So it's quite intensive. <laughs> I didn't get anywhere near water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, really? Yeah, because when well, I was Oh, the water is dry. Oh, also, mm -hmm. also, it wasn't necessarily shot in it. Yeah. No, oh, okay. because that would be impossible to speak. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. totally impractical because wow. it, I, I have 
shot like Life Aquatic in Los Angeles. Yeah, of course. He yeah. shot a couple of sequences, you know, with, in scuba gear, gear, mm -hmm. and it's very slow. You know, yeah. it's very yes, of course. Yeah. I'd still be there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I just finished two days ago. I just came from Australia. Oh my. Um, <laughs> I like I like Australia. In fact, I've been there a lot. I've I've made a movie on Tasmania. I've made a movie in the Gold Coast. I made a movie in Tasmania called The Hunter. Quite a good movie. Oh, I, I saw made that a movie that's called uh, Daybreakers in the same oh, area at the Warner Brothers studio and around the Gold Coast. And now we're shooting Aquaman around the Gold Coast. And I've even been uh, there with the theater, um, mm -hmm. uh, with the Worcester Group uh, touring there. Um, so You're a native. You're I, pretty I'm much exactly, native exactly. already. They should give me a tennis ball. I, I have family in Orlando. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm oh. from Wisconsin, but uh, hmm. they were snowbirds. My mm -hmm. parents retired down there, mm -hmm. and uh, they're both dead, but two of my sisters uh, moved down there and lived hmm. down there. Mm -hmm. So I know that area very well. Hmm. So a lot, a lot, hmm. because my parents lived there. Uh, hmm. the, the, my father died when he was 97, and hmm. he probably retired when he was 65. So. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, Thirty years of going down there, um, and then I had two sisters down there. Mm -hmm. And when my son was small, of course, I, I sure. would go down to visit the grandparents and go to Disney World. Mm -hmm. So I knew it. Uh, of course, I wasn't familiar with the Magic Castle. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Magic. This is called Magic this is Magic yeah, Castle. Castle. Yeah, yeah. Always yeah. called the Magic Kingdom. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so I, I did know it. Uh, mm -hmm quite well that part of Florida. Hmm. Um, in fact, I to get the accent for Bobby, which is very slight, and there's all, as you know, there's all, all kinds yeah, of all accents kinds. in Florida, <laughs> but I wanted to play with something. I I taped my brother-in-law, hmm. and he's quite religious, and speaking of language, yep. he, kept on saying, <laughs> he kept on saying, well, I can't say that. <laughs> I say, David, come on, man. it's for research. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> you know, the Lord will know that you don't, may, you aren't really taking His name in vain. And he's like, oh, all right. <laughs> no, uh -huh. As it turned out, I didn't up use, and I didn't end up using his accent uh -huh. because it didn't sound right. <laughs> I think that's interesting you say that. Um, because there aren't any big scenes, there aren't there's a big transformation. Uh, on paper, maybe Bobby seemed a little bit like a serviceable character, you know, just to keep the narrative going, like a something, mm -hmm. a device. Mm -hmm. But so often I, I sign on to something because of the feel for the people and the feel for the project itself. And miraculously, sometimes, uh, roles that it was a very good screenplay don't get me wrong but Bobby did not read as strong on the page as as I think it became and that's partly because Sean added some things but but it really why I, I went on board was because of the whole project this world that I didn't know the way he was going to shoot it we were shooting in a real place with real people mixing real people with with first timers, with street casting, with actors, a very good script, uh, a, a story that you know, seen through the eyes of this kid, it really explores the kind of beauty and of, of childhood. But then also you have this shadow of if we don't take care, you know, this is where it could lead, and a, and a basic feeling of you know a community that that needs help and what people's responses to that. And it's only after shooting the movie that I, I can appreciate that Bobby was uh, Bobby was kind of a beautiful character in, in the respect that he, you know, the thing I keep on coming back to is he, he somewhere he understands. For each person he has a different yeah. relationship. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's practical. He wants things to go smooth. Somewhere he deeply understands that your happiness my happiness is dependent on yours and vice versa, which is a very basic thing. But you see it played out in a very real, tangible way. And I, that's a beautiful thing to watch in a, a such uh, precarious world. So what's, these next? People. what's next? 
Um, I go off to France to shoot with uh, Julian Schnabel mm -hmm. uh, for uh, a film called At Eternity's Gate, oh. which is it's not a biopic, but I play Vincent van Gogh. Oh. Hence, I'm starting to grow my beard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't have a beard in Aquaman, so I just stopped. Yeah. It. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, really? Uh, so uh, after this, I, I go there and we prep it and we shoot in Arles and in Paris and. I mean, right what now. I mean, I've started. Yeah, yeah. and uh, of course, Julian wrote a very beautiful script with Jean Croquerier, uh, a great writer. Mm -hmm. um, it's a beautiful script. It's, it really concentrates on the last part of Van Gogh's life, which were the most dramatic, but also the most productive. Mm -hmm. So we'll be shooting down in Arles at the Yellow House and also mm -hmm. at the. Uh, yeah. no, recently, also, there's been. Uh, discovery of a, a whole uh, ledger filled with sketches oh, wow. that have been authenticated mm -hmm. that you know this uh, famous painting a uh, portrait of uh, Madame Junot mm -hmm. uh, from Arles she gave him a ledger and he put like 80 drawings in it that's, a, that's in the cartoon yeah it yeah. is yeah. and then he gave it back to someone at the mm -hmm. hotel and it looked like ledgers, so they put it with all the ledgers, yeah. so it was lost mm. for many years. Yeah. And they only recently found it and then authenticated it. Mm. And it's some of the richest because it's a period where he, he was really in top form and uh, just beautiful sketches. There's, there's been a book published by, uh, I don't know the publisher, but it's a French publisher recently that's very beautiful that's just come out. I hope so. <laughs> I, you know, I saw him this summer and. I would say yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would. I mean, nothing, <laughs> nothing concrete, but um, and well, he's working on someone, something, and I saw all the index cards out there, you know, he's planning out things, and I teased him. I said, Wes, am I in there somewhere? And he said, You're in there. So that's it. No, he's, he's great. Too bad. Too bad he didn't.